to prison, you busted rocks. And it was old sandstone, strong, sturdy. And I couldn't think of anything more precious and wondered how many times did those prisoners knowing that it was going to shelter young children as a schoolhouse how many times with the care of men understanding the need for safety for children as they broke those blocks and they chipped out the fronts of those blocks, how many times did they do it with care? And then I thought to myself, as a church, how many men had given their life to Jesus while doing that? Or how many men reflected each time they carved on those rocks? How many of them left their sin, their debt to society in those rocks? And I began to cry, thinking about today, and what man does to man. How much we need Jesus more in this society today. But I don't know if we need him more. Or we need more workers in the field. For it says the fields are wide unto harvest. but the reapers are few. And we're losing children. We're losing souls every day. But the real joyous factor of that is there are souls still coming and breaking free from that prison of life, remembering Jesus or reflecting on who Jesus is in the knowledge given them. Think about it. I reached over one day as I was looking at the rocks and wondering, will they allow us to keep the building or are they going to condemn the building? But a miracle took place. I was in my home that day. It was after church. We just happened to not go out. We used to have a group of us that would go out to lunch after church a lot. But that day we had a couple over to the house. He had been a police officer and... Uh, we were talking. My son come running in the house said, there's some smoke by the church and ran to his room and crawled under his bed. For some reason, I figured he must have something to do with that smoke over there. I looked outside and there was just a little whiff of smoke. So I nonchalantly went back and grabbed the hose and headed over there. By the time I got over there, it was engulfed in flames 15 to 20 feet high. He had found what he thought was a firecracker, took it out there. Anyone know what a jumping jack is? It was a, one person. It was a jumping jack and he lit that thing and, went, and landed right by the church. And there were Tams probably 
50 years old all the way around that place, tall. And tams are not a good thing to have by wood. They catch fire in a heartbeat. The fire was called in immediately, 911, we're on fire. 15 minutes later, a call back from the fire department. You sure you need us? Yeah. So about the time they got there, the interesting thing was we turned on the water and anyone remember Limpid Lizard in that cartoon and used to have in the funny papers? And he'd shoot the arrow and the arrow would go right out the front. Who remembers that? Two, three people? Well, someone didn't read the funny papers. But anyway, it was like that little arrow. They turned it on and the water went no reason for that water to have done that. None whatsoever. But it did. So what did we do? We had to take and ran a line of people from the ditch behind the church all the way up. And I was at the top. By the time they get there, I'd have about a quarter of a bucket of water. And i go... Pfft. And all I did was there was one little spot about like this where the fire licked at the top of that cedar shake roof. Now, anyone knows anything about old cedar shake? It don't take a licking and come back ticking. But it licked at that for 15 to 20 minutes as the flames went above the roof of the church, it was so hot, it literally blew out the windows in the church, did not catch the curtains on fire. We kicked the front doors in, which would ne had never been opened. And by the time the fire department got there, the Tams had basically burned themselves down. The church was filled with smoke, thick, heavy smoke. And we walked out. The fire department decided they'd hack on the church and make it look like they'd done something. There was a, if you want to get publicity, burn your church. Boy, people stopped on the highway to watch. We got noticed in the paper. People came afterwards, actually. But the miracle was that night with the windows blown out, the church having been filled with smoke, the church from Treasure Valley had come over that night to be at our church for service. And the other visitors that were there, they came in. None of them could smell smoke. They didn't even notice the windows were broke out. And to the day that we left Evangel Family Worship Center, we had never had to wash down the walls or even do anything to those pews to get the smell of the smoke out. Now, I know it was full of smoke because I went in with that police officer and we kicked those front doors down ourselves and then jumped out of there. It was so heavy. It never smelt of smoke. Dave, you guys were going there then, weren't you? It never smelt of smoke. 
One time we had a flood. The flood filled the bottom of our church about a foot and a half deep. And when it was taken out, there was no damage to the floor or the walls. In fact, the carpet was fine. You could have went trolling down there, it was so deep. I'm here to tell you this morning, when the body of Christ comes together, there's nothing you'll face that God can't fix. Oh, the insurance might want to take credit for this, might want to take credit for that, but let me tell you something. God takes care of his people when you're in God's will. It's important that we be in God's will. If we're not in God's will, then it will cause failure. It will cause issues to be unsettled. So it's important to be in God's will. You say, what is God's will for me? To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and to love thy neighbor as thyself. Any of you have a neighbor that's hard to love? Any of you even know your neighbors? Any of you care to know your neighbors? Two years ago, we had a time where snow was so deep that Gary and I thought we'd never get off our four-wheelers out here. And I go home, and I knew who the elderly people were in my neighborhood, and I'd go over there, and I would push all that snow so they could get out of their driveways. Oh, they'd want to come out and pay me and everything, and I went... No. Being a neighbor anymore is a lost art. Hello? Being a neighbor isn't like the old days where everyone sat on the porch and drank iced tea and watched the children play in the road. Playing basketball and baseball and everything else. How many of you remember those days? Okay, I'm not far. Those were the days, my friend. As I watched something the other day, I looked at some of the things that we used to do, like get on our bicycles at 6 in the morning before mom and dad got up, go to their room, go, can I go and stop there? And they go, yeah. Well, you said yes. I asked you if I could go. Where'd you go? Well, I told you I was going to go. And you'd take off on your bike. You'd go all over. And you'd come home, but they didn't really worry. Nowadays, moms and dads have to stand with their children at the bus to wait for the bus to get there, afraid of what could happen. It's a different world we live in today. Sin is being called good, and good is being called evil. Things have changed completely, and we're still coming to churches, and we're still serving God, and we're still lifting up Jesus, and we're still holding the doors open for those who want to come. The largest portion of churches in America are less than 50 people. Did you know that? Less than 50 people. The largest portion of our churches. But what happens? We hear about the great big mega churches and think, man, I wish I had one of those. 
I wish I, I wish we, no. Be content in what God is doing. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. Some of you who have been workers forever, working on the front lines for Jesus, may be weary, but don't be. Because whether you're serving for two or you're serving for 200, it doesn't matter. It's the thing that you have in your heart that matters. You're doing it for Jesus. If you keep that in mind, guess what? You're blessed. Doesn't matter what others think. You're blessed. Because how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell in unity. We have a family. We're the family of God. You may find that through the blood, it's more than it is through the water. Because it's the blood of Jesus that brings you tighter than that sometimes that came through the birthing canal. Through the birthing canal, the water was broke. And you may have difficulties with your family and found that the church is your family. Or your family's gone and the only family you have left is the church. Have you ever thought of those things? Or are pastors just weird? You see, to whom much is given, much is required. And I don't take lightly that I'm supposed to be here right now saying what I'm saying this minute. And you say, but what's it mean, Brother Miller? What is it to me? The fields are ripe unto harvest. And what you're doing for the Lord is more than others are doing. Some want to hide. It's easier to hide in a big crowd. When you're in a small family church, it's a little harder to hide, isn't it? I have a surprise speaker for you next week. Some of you, if you miss, you're going to be bummed. Others of you, you're wondering, who'd he get? Well, there's a reason I did that this way. is because I was asked to do it this way. But guess what? It's going to be a heartfelt fun. How many of you like fun? How many of you love just wallowing in your misery? Just like being bummed out. Can't praise God anymore. Come in the door of the church with your chin in a wheelbarrow. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy each other. Enjoy this fellowship we'll have today. Enjoy the business we'll take care of today. It's light. It's easy and probably the shortest business meeting I'll ever have in history, unless you keep talking and want to know something. And that's okay, too. Because it's most important in this world we do the kingdom work, the work that we do for Jesus, and know why and what we're doing and what we could do if we just stay faithful to the Lord. Stand with me. But Brother Miller, it's not 12. Well, who's going to gripe we got out early? But I don't eat till 12. Well, you can wait 20 minutes. That's fine. With every head bowed, eyes closed. Christians praying. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Are you here now and 
Your world's been spinning so fast it feels like you can't get off. You're just being pulled back down and the gravity is so heavy your shoulders are held down. I feel led this morning to ask if there's any here who want to be saved, who want to ask Jesus into their life as their personal Savior. If you're here this morning, the altars are open and I came to this altar and gave my life to Jesus. You can too. Nobody can deny him and say they're saved. If you feel today's the day of your salvation, this is the hour of your change. This is the hour you become a new creature in Christ, a new person. This is your hour. I know I haven't missed God, and I'll leave it in God's hands this morning. But you're here this morning, and you'd say, Brother Miller, things in my life holding me back. I don't want to be held back anymore. I got to find the will of God for my life. I'm tired of doing it myself. I'm tired of trying on my own. I need Jesus to do it for me. And I give up and I lay it in his hands and going to lay it there till it happens. If you're here this morning, would you make your way to the altar so we can pray with you? You need healing. There's nothing more I need to say. We know who the great physician is. And you've got time. 